Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. I have just one question this morning. If God is with us, as the prophet Isaiah foretold, as the evangelist Matthew proclaims, where is he? Where is God? We're told, God with us, Emmanuel. But where is he? When terrorists attack our nation, Where was God? As people jumped out of burning multi story buildings. Where was it? As persecution strikes Christians around the world this very day, where is God? As tragedy strikes Christians, sometimes it's financial tragedy, as people lose their jobs and don't know what's going to happen next. Sometimes it's medical tragedies as illness comes. And not just the kind of thing you go see the doctor, you get a prescription, and 10 to 14 days later you're feeling better. But illnesses that change lives, that take lives. When accidents happen in planes and trains and automobiles, and lives come to an end far too soon, where is God? As homes are broken by divorce, abuse, infidelity, as people's lives are destroyed by drugs and alcohol and addiction, as our world seems to be spiraling further and further away from things that make sense to a free-for-all of whatever you want is acceptable. Where is God? The prophet says, God with us, Emmanuel. The evangelist says, God with us, Emmanuel. But where is he? He hasn't stopped all the bad things from happening. He hasn't made our lives perfect and easy. Christians still struggle. There are people at home, and even here in this building, who may be struggling right now, or who were struggling just recently. Where is God? The scriptures proclaim God with us, but where is he? Why isn't he intervening? Why isn't he making all the problems going away, go away? <clears throat> Sometimes it just begins to feel like God has turned his back on us. Have you ever felt that? Have you ever wondered that? Where is he? Why isn't he doing something? Has he turned his back on us? The people in Isaiah's day asked that. Ahaz and his people. They were threatened by their neighbors danger on all sides around them, and they were afraid of being overrun. Things were bad, and they had honestly given up hope that God was going to intervene. That's why when the prophet Isaiah says to Ahaz, ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. And Ahaz replied, I will not ask. And I will not put the Lord to the test. It, it almost seems like he's being pious and holy and I'm not going to test God. Maybe. 
but more likely Ahaz had given up. He'd given up because he didn't see God at work, thought God has turned his back on him, and so Ahaz had already made up his mind how he was going to fix his problem in his own way. He was going to make an alliance with a pagan king nearby, more powerful than his enemies, and fix his problem himself. For Ahaz, God was still there. The problem was Ahaz had turned his back on God. These words appear on a church bulletin board in a Midwestern church that I won't name, but I had the pleasure of visiting. If God is far away, who has left? The reality is, we ask, where is God? But so often, we live our lives far away from God. We ask where God was on days like September 11th, and yet the question becomes, where was our nation just two days before, on September 9th? Was our nation in church, worshiping and praising God, and looking to him for guidance and direction, or had our nation turned its back on him and sought its own way? When tragedy strikes, when difficulty comes, we ask the question, where is God? And yet for many, they didn't care where God was before the problem came. They didn't think about him. They didn't care about him. They didn't look to him. It was only when trouble came that even the thought of God entered their mind. Now, I know that's not the case for everyone. And that's not the case for the people in this room were joining us by the stream. At least that's what we want to be the case. The painful reality for everyone is that there are times in our lives when we turn our backs on God. And we don't want to have anything to do with him. When we're tempted, we don't want to think about him. When life is good and things are going our way, it's not uncommon to forget about him. The reality is, because of our fallen human nature, Every day, we turn our backs on God and walk away from Him. If not in our actions, then in our thoughts, in our words, in our hearts. And only when the trouble comes do we begin to say, where is God? Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. The truth is, <clears throat> approximately 2,027-ish years ago, the Almighty Eternal God took on flesh and blood in the womb of a young girl, probably maybe 13 years old, and became a human being for you. Left his throne in heaven and took on human mortal flesh for you so that you would never be separated from him. In the incarnation of Christ, which we're going to celebrate in a week, 
God bound himself to humanity. And he bound himself to you in holy baptism. Where is God? That's the question when trouble comes. Well, here's a question for you. Where's the baptismal font? Where is it? See, a few people kind of like... It's hidden right now, isn't it? Right now we had this beautiful Christmas tree, and again, thank you to the folks who cut it down, who decorated it, who did all this work. But way back here, and Andy's probably going to lose me on the camera, way back here behind the tree is the font. You might not be able to see it, but it's still there. You might not realize it, but it's still there. We not, might not be using it at this exact moment, but it's still there. And there at the font by water and the word, God bound himself, not just to humanity in general like he did in the incarnation, but there by water and the word, he bound himself to you. And assured you, promised you, guaranteed you, That Emmanuel isn't just God with us. It's God with you. And just like the font may be hard to see right now, sometimes it's hard to see God at work. When tragedy strikes, when trouble comes, when you're enduring a hardship and pain and loss, it's hard to see God. But He is there. Every time a member of the body of Christ speaks a word of concern, a word of care, a word of reassurance, Christ Jesus speaks to you through them. Every time a doctor heals. A police officer helps. An EMT saves. Christ Jesus works through them. Every time you lift up prayers for a brother or sister in Christ who's, in, who's suffering or in need or in pain, Christ Jesus works through you. There are times in life when it's hard to see God at work. We question whether he has a plan. Is he even there? And yet God has assured you. He is always with you. Working for your good. To bless, to help. Even when life is difficult. Even when pain and loss and trouble comes. He is there with you. Beside you. Bringing you through that day and the next and the one after that. And at length, he will bring you to your heavenly home. That place of eternal joy when all of God's blessings are yours in full. There are times in life when we ask, where is God? We don't see him. We wonder if he still cares, if he's still there. Has he turned his back on us? The truth is, far too often we turn our backs on God. To go our own way, do our own thing, seek after our own wants and desires. But God will never turn his back on you. That's his promise to you in Christ Jesus. His guarantee to you in holy baptism. Whatever you face in life, God is always with you. 
Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, who is always with you and will bring you to life everlasting. Amen.